Okay, so let's start and uh, start with um, confirming who's here from the first team first, as usual. So um, Andre is here, uh, Craig is here, uh, Michael is here, um, Wendell is here. So um, I think, and, and John Vier is here as well. And I think that's um, all the team members that I see are on the call. And of course, her man is here to support us from the NRO Secretariat. Um, so if there's nobody else um, joining, the, I didn't call the name who is from the Chris team. Uh, let's move on to confirmed agenda um, today. And um, Haman, I wonder if it's possible for you to show the agenda up on the screen. In the process. Okay, sure. Thank you. So while while uh, her man is working on that, um, let me just uh, go through it verbally. So action items as usual, and so we we want to cover the minutes from the last call and um, and um, how the meeting went with the CWG stewardship chair. Some um, follow up from the GAO, uh, GAO interview. I think those are the core um, action items that we'd like to confirm from the last call. And so that's at, um, that's agenda um, number two. And then agenda number three is to confirm the current status. And in addition to what we usually do to confirm feedback from the global list and feedback from the RIL list, uh, what I've added this time is um, um, confirming the status of preparing implementation, implementation by the RIRs and also feedback from our other communities. I think this is something that we need to um, to confirm the status uh, regularly from now on. Um, agenda item four, we confirm the role of the CRISP team in community consultation and implementation. As you can see, we have started some discussions on the on the global I analyst um, about the SLA text. So uh, I think we want to be clear on the role of the CRISP team expected on um, if any, on um, discussions on this. And then agenda item five, update on the meeting that uh, Nurani and I had with the, the names uh, chairs. Uh, so covering the key points relevant to the numbers and the next steps, especially in providing the feedback uh, to the proposal. So I think that's pretty much it, except for the next meeting, um, confirming the date of the next meeting um, that I want to cover in the call today. Um, does anybody else have any suggestions onto the agenda? I'm not seeing any hands, so um, let's move on to agenda point number two. So minutes from the last call. Thank you, Haman, for sending the uh, agenda from the last call, the 18th call. Um, so I gave my feedback to um, on the list. So. I believe if there are any no other comments, once this is reflected, it's ready to be posted on the um, on the Chris team NRO website. So uh, let's go to to B. Uh, fix regular meeting uh, schedule, and I think Herman has already helped us uh, confirm this. I can't remember the exact you know um, days on what we agreed, but um, I think uh, we are, this is already um, posted on the Chris team um, web page. So um, re related to uh, 2B, I think uh, in addition to sharing with the Chris team, it may be worth also letting the, com um, the community know that these are the regular calls that we'll be having at the Chris team so that they can also um, expect when the Chris team call will happen in, in advance. So um, may I request um, in our own secretariat to help us communicate this to the, um, to the global list? Yes, of course, uh, Isumi, I will post the, the selected Thanks. dates. Uh, if you allow me, um, um, what we were uh, decided through the uh, to the poll was that the second Thursday and the fourth Wednesday of each month uh, will be the best suitable time for most of the people that uh, responded to the poll. Um, that that will be like a, the scheduled uh, set times, but um, you can always add as a point of the agenda to confirm the next meeting. So if there is any reason that you need to move the meeting, well, it will be decided at the end of each meeting. So um, 
Uh, this was the first example of uh, to, to move the meeting a, a week earlier uh, because next week would be a uh, right meeting and many members would be busy. So I will post the information in the, uh, the general IANA transfer mailing list and I will um, set the, the links for the WebEx that would remain the same uh, uh, for, this, for, this, for these calls. Excellent. Thank you, Herman, um, for, uh, for this and also for coordinating um, our schedule. I'm sure it wasn't uh, very easy. And um, I, I do like to double check that uh, we are all good with the fixed time of uh, 13 UTC. I think, um, well, some of us uh, perhaps felt that it may be good to rotate the time and we've tried UTC, um, I think, 20 or 21. Um, according to my memory. But I, I'm not sure if it worked well with, um, with the, the Chris team members in general. So I personally don't have a strong preference whether we, we're going to rotate time or, or stick with the fixed time of UTC um, 13. And I think the current suggestion is to stick with the same time, unless um, any our members feel otherwise. So um, please do feel you know, free to raise it if you prefer if you think it's better to rotate the time. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll stick with the same time with GC13. Um, right, so I, I just posted in the chat room a link to the um, uh, meeting time analysis based on the residence of the Christy members. Um, and c currently, the 1 p.m. UTC is, this, is the time that is, is best for most of the group, uh, but um, you can check again if you want to um, find another time that would um, uh, be um, good for people that is in the very plus-ish, uh, plus plus-10-ish plus of UTC. Um, but that's, that's the suggestion to keep the one, the one PM UTC. The link I just posted in the chat room is in case you want to take another look and make uh, new suggestions. Thank you very much, Herman. Uh, I think um, uh, this is very helpful. And I saw this um, when you posted on the CRISP team list. And I agree with your observation. Um, 13 UTC seems to be the best time that fits uh, with all the CRISP team members. So that's my personal observation. But of course, uh, open for any other comments or suggestions about the time. So maybe we'll we will give it another um, 24 hours until we we finalize um, the time um, to be UTC 13 to see if there are any other comments and if no objections, concerns expressed, let's uh, let's uh, keep the UTC 13 as a regular time. So thank you once again, Herman. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not seeing any hands, so let's move to 2C, uh, which is arrange a call with the CWG stewardship chairs, which uh, we did, and uh, Nurani has forwarded the notes that we have sent um, to those chairs from the meeting. So I'd like to um, cover this um, perhaps later in agenda item five, um, together with discussing how we will um, give the feedback to the names proposal um, as the numbers community. Um, does anybody have any um, questions, comments related to the status um, of the meeting that we'll, we had with the, um, the names chairs? Not seeing any hands, so um, let's go to 2D. So follow up from the GAO um, interview. So um, I think we've given an update from the um, GAO interview in the last call uh, with the Chris team. But uh, we still need to submit a written uh, response to um, the GAO. Um, Nurani and I have already shared what we, we were planning to respond to GAO before the interview. But we, we would like to do a little bit more brushing up on, on our responses, especially giving better background on our environment, so including our relationship with the IANA. Um, and the ICANN um, in terms of like a policy development process, which is different from the regular ICANN community. 
And uh, we received two additional questions um, from the GAO, which I think Mirani has forwarded to the Christine. Uh, one of it is related to the role of the ASO uh, within the ICANN, which is pretty simple, uh, straightforward, and we, we simply share the facts on. Um, the second is that um, how hard it is uh, for the numbers of the RIRs to terminate the, um, the SLA, how hard or how easy it is. And this may be something that needs a little bit uh, more work on and a consultation with the team on how we respond to this. Um, we haven't uh, really drafted a response to this yet, uh, but um, I have um, made similar um, comments in my, uh, the panel discussion with the ICANN board uh, related to this point, saying that um, currently under the uh, NTIA contract, this condition of the ability for, um, for the contract holder to terminate the agreement, this is already in. So this is actually not changing the current situation and uh, making it any easier or harder than um, it is today. I think this may be the, the core message that we want to, um, to give uh, in responding to GAO. Um, let me stop here and see if there are any um, comments related to the GAO, um, the responding to the GAO interview in general or this particular question that um, I have shared related to how easy or how hard it is to terminate the SLA. I'm um, not seeing any hands. So, um, so uh, once Don Rani and I work on the draft responses, uh, it would be great um, if he could uh, to get up, get back to us with any feedback you might have. They are expecting us to submit our response in mid-May. So, um, well, there's no specific clear date, but um, maybe roughly by the end of um, next week or um, the week, the early week after, uh, we're planning to submit a response to GAO. So that's the general status. Then um, let's move on to confirm the current status. So um, preparing implementation by the RIRs, um, so 3A. So um, I'm sure we've all seen the, um, the SLA text already being um, open and um, under consultation with the community. Um, so um, maybe we can cover a little bit more details on how the Chris team will play the role um, on this discussion in agenda item four. Um, I wonder if there's anybody from the RIRs be able to share any updates related to uh, the review committee. There's, um, there's a lot of attention on the SLA, but um, uh, I'm not seeing much um, information related to the review committee. And I, I'd be especially be interested to know if there will be likely to be have any draft plan uh, available to be shared with the community before the target date of uh, September 2015. So um, would anybody um, from the Chris team um, who's also the, uh, an RIR staff be able to share any um, observation related to this? It's me. This is Andres. Great. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, the London meeting uh, had also, uh, there was a statement, and it's publicly known that the, the so-called lifestyle community met, but also the NROIC met for a day. And there were discussions in this, uh, regarding this matter. There is not uh, yet anything drafted to be, uh, or at, the, at least able to be shared, but there has been useful discussion, interesting discussion uh, regarding the composition and, and uh, ideas about the review committee. Um, I am sure that before the, the deadline or the term that we need to provide uh, something to the community, the, there will be something about the review committee. But at the moment, we don't have anything to share yet. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that uh, it wasn't that clear uh, for, the, for a moment, and it, it, it became clear after our, our discussions at the NRO, you see, is that 
Um, is the NRO the one, or, or the ARIARs individually, the ones that are uh, the responsible and they have the ability to draft the charter of the review committee and to integrate also the, the review committee? Or in, in case uh, of, if it is the case that uh, the charter says that the communities are integrated in the review committee, well, uh, that will be the case. But um, the one that is uh, in place for setting the rules for the review committee or the composition, considering our guidance as CRISP, uh, will be the, the NRO. That, that is something that has been at least clarified. Thank you very much, Andres, for this uh, update. And um, I noted that um, there's nothing uh, concrete enough to be shared, but uh, it's very reassuring to know that uh, this is uh, this is has been discussed uh, by the NROEC and uh, likely to be to be ready um, to be shared with the wider community um, before the target date of September um, 2015. Uh, it's for me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Herman? Uh, no, no, sorry, Andres. Uh, Andres, please, you first. Uh, well, um, I, what I, considering what you said about reassuring, uh, what I would, I would add is that the NRO is aware about uh, the objective of having something concrete uh, soon to share. Excellent. Thank you. And Herman? No, that's it. Uh, as the last point of Andres was going to be mine, uh, that they are very aware of the deadline and they, they need to develop this uh, by before September. And they will have it as an open discussion. And the next meeting they will have they will, will be in June during the ICANN meeting in Buenos Aires. So uh, I think by then they should have uh, some sort of uh, recommendations about the review team. Great, Amand, and I see um, Andres confirming through chat that um, we're on the same page. Um, and um, one point related to, I mean, not exactly related to the, the details of each of the implementation, but we did request the NROEC to, to make a statement about acknowledging the first team proposal, that they're, they're ready to, um, to work on implementation consistent with the first team proposal. Um, I'm sure this is really obvious to us and uh, um, between us and NROEC, but I think it's very important that the uh, NRO clearly states this uh, for the rest of the community, not just the numbers, but um, the other communities that um, um, RIRs are committed to this. And so I, I wonder the status uh, related to this. And another point I'd like to confirm the status is that uh, we agreed um, at the last um, call, Rani and I joined um, for the NROEC, to, for NROEC to give a, a guidance on the rough timeline on what to expect when. Um, so, for example, what um, both Andres and her man has shared um, in terms of the review committee, that we can expect to have something um, to be available before the target date of September. That's uh, something that will be reassuring, and also the next steps and um, how the, the, um, the comments on the SLA will be incorporated and how this will be um, made available. I think this kind of like giving rough timelines um, also helps the, um, the community on knowing what to expect. So has there, has there been any preparation um, on the NRO related to this? Um, I suppose maybe it's a little bit hot. Okay, come on. Uh, it's okay. The the uh, the NROIC discuss um, uh, this statement uh, statement as part of the um, and decided to include this in the call for the uh, SLA draft. Um, they uh, uh, interpreted that the mention of in this call for the SLA uh, uh, will implicit uh, acknowledge the proposal submitted by the CRISP team to the ICG. In fact, it's the first uh, phrase in this, in this uh, call that is published right now on the NRO website. 
And um, this call for comment for the draft also includes a set of uh, uh, timeline, which is uh, are close related with the coming RIR meetings. Um, and um, I think many, most of the aspects that were uh, discussed and decided to be included in the, ch in the joint uh, meeting you have with the NOEC uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, were considered in this in this call for comments in this uh, announcement, and uh, it's right now published in the NRO website, and it has been spread in in the in other list. Um, no, Chairman. Um, thank you for clarifying this. Um, so I, I think it doesn't quite. I understand that um, this. This should uh, cover the fact that uh, RIRs are ready to work based on the um, the Christine proposal um, on related to the SLA. Um, I, I do actually still find it too helpful to have like a, a rough timeline, including the review committee and acknowledgement, including the review committee. But maybe this is something that I will discuss uh, with um, with Nurani and also share with the Chris team on the mailing list. Uh, in case there are any additional um, follow-up uh, that um, that needs to be done with the NROEC. So um, at this moment, I feel I would still find it helpful to have like a rough timeline on what to expect, um, including the review committee, even if it's nothing that uh, that is too complete. Um, so that's my personal observation at this stage, and uh, I'd like to see if there are any other comments uh, related to this uh, from uh, from Herman or any other members of the group team. To me, it's Craig here. Um, we haven't had a discussion in relation to the timing, but obviously the comment period doesn't end until middle of June. So. Um, I think the RIR lawyers would probably be meeting in, at Buenos Aires um, after the end of the comment period, and I imagine that what we will do it would be to look at some of the comments and, and discuss how we approach um, those comments. Um, some, uh, you know, for the comments that make sense, I'm sure we will then make an edit to the document and release a second draft. That's that's my perspective, but I haven't. We haven't had a chance to discuss that, but clearly we're not going to be um, making changes on the hop uh, as uh, during the comment period. So we will wait until the end of the comment period before making any changes. Oh, no, Chair Craig. Thank you very much, and I think it's very good to to confirm uh, about how the comments will be handled. Or uh, and uh, thank you for clarifying this. But I think the only part that may be like a little bit not so clear is what to expect related to the review committee, uh, which is clear to us now because uh, Andres and Herman have shared the update, but uh, maybe not so visible to the rest of the community. So um, I think it would be helpful to, to at least have some kind of like, um, this is what we're working on and uh, you can also expect some update related to the review committee. Um, but maybe I will draft something if I feel uh, we should request something to the NLEC related to this uh, and, uh, and also consult with the first team. And if everybody agrees that, okay, it's helpful to, to uh, request an NLEC about some, something like this, maybe we can uh, send an email to um, NLEC uh, requesting them to consider whether they can um, make an um, any kind of statement on what to expect related to the review committee as well. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? I'm not seeing any hands, so um, at least uh, no objection. And I see a Michael agreeing with Craig, um, so it's good that uh, we're all on the same page related to the SLA. So um, great. So let's move on to 3B, our feedback on the global list. Um, so I think the, the feedback is basically related to on the SLA text, and I see um, some interaction going on back and forth are related to the jurisdiction. And um, also, I, I, I recall there were some um, questions posted from Pinder Wong where I didn't see anybody responding to his question. 
So I feel um, somebody should uh, at least uh, clarify um, answers to his questions. Um, maybe we can um, discuss um, more in details related to this in agenda number four. But um, if there's anything else that uh, people would like to highlight related to feedback from on the global list, um, please uh, do feel to raise it and share it with the with the team. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. So, um, and uh, thank you, John Vier, also for clarifying that. Uh, uh, it's fine by you. I, I believe this is related to the next uh, steps uh, really on, on communication with the, the NROC. Um, so let's go to uh, 3C. Feedback from the RIR regional list and uh, preparation for um, RIP 70. And I also believe there will be um, a LACNIC uh, meeting, uh, LACNIC 23. I can't remember the exact number. So any preparation for RIP, LACNIC, and um, uh, Wendua has uh, given us an uh, update on the AFRONIC meeting at the last uh, call. So, um, would any of the colleagues from the right region or the LACNIC region be, um, be able to share what we can expect from the coming meetings? Hi, Izumi. This is Andre. Um, so, yeah, well, next week we have RIPE 17 in Amsterdam. And uh, on Tuesday, we're organizing a panel, which uh, will take place, I think, at 4 o'clock, at the session at 4 o'clock, um, dedicated to IANA transition. Uh, so, well, I think that there are a few points that we'd like to kind of highlight and uh, accomplish during this panel. Well, first of all, is, of course, update uh, on, on the process, right? Uh, where we stand, well, maybe a, be fresh, a little bit of refresh and then update on the CRISP process to date uh, and the uh, internet number community proposal. Then we plan to present the draft service level agreement uh, by, by well, prepared by the area legal staff. So I think that's a very important point because uh, last meeting, every meeting, there were no draft SLAs and no discussions. So we hope to stimulate some discussion and stimulate some feedback on SLAs as well. At this, at this panel. And then also look at kind of other developments around, uh, around CRISP, uh, which are um, other developments on IANA affected community, community, like name proposal and what happens in protocol parameters land, um, and have some discussion there. So that's basically the plan. Thank you, Andre. I think it sounds like a very fruitful meeting, um, and uh, I think um, we can certainly uh, share, like, uh, with the people outside of right region on the global list that this is happening in the in the coming uh, right plus seventy. So thank you very much, Andre, for this uh, update, and excellent to hear that uh, there will be discussions on the SLA test as well. Um, so. General, from anybody from the LACNIC region wants to give update, uh, well, not update, but what to expect from LACNIC 23. I guess, I guess this goes also to me, um, uh, sorry, it's for me. Um, this is Andres. Well, LACNIC meeting will be held in two weeks in Lima. Um, it's LACNIC 23, and there will be there will be two sessions on Tuesday, um, plenary sessions for the whole community to attend. Regarding uh, one of them will be an informative session um, on the outcome of CRISP and the next steps. The, so we will we will report the community the stuff that we that was or they were already reported. Um, in remote uh, ways or by by reports or by social media and websites, but that needs to be clarified for the community. This panel will have, uh, it's not yet uh, exactly, precisely confirmed the, the, the members of the team, but the, the, Chris member, the, the Chris team members from the region and some other members from the community will be there uh, explaining this, this situation. 
Uh, if someone uh, of this list or someone of uh, yours, uh, commu your communities are planning to attend uh, to the Lightning meeting in Lima, and you can let me know that uh, we can easily, and it would be really helpful to include someone from other region in that panel too. And the other panel will be back to back from, from this one in, there are two one hour panels or something like that. Will be more like like a community discussion, uh, taking note of note of that those uh, reports and uh, having a, a discussion on the next steps. And that that discussion will have people from the ICG uh, that are in our region, people from um, the local leaderships of, of the community, and other members of uh, the leaderships of of the areas and perhaps some some others. Uh, uh, from ICANN. So uh, that panel will be more like a like an open discussion with the community. But before these two panels, there will be a, an informative session on internet governance that will have a section on the transition of the IANA stewardship. So uh, we will have th these three different uh, activities in, in the Lightning meeting. And uh, there will be also another activity more related to prospective and, and other policy issues that may may or, or not um, discuss the transition, where Fadi Chahadi and our CEO and, and some others uh, will be in that panel, but that will be at the end of the, of the meeting. And I'm not sure about how related to this uh, matter will be. Well, thank you, Andres, for this update. And good to know that uh, it's, it's very, it sounds very com comprehensive. Um, so focusing on the IANA stewardship transition, but also you will um, have uh, discussions on the wider internet governance uh, related issues. So good to know. And um, so maybe perhaps um, uh, there will be some discussions on the SLA consultation. Uh, I don't know in which exactly part the of the session that you mentioned, but um, can um, you to me? Yeah, the, the second panel, the one that discusses the, the next steps, uh, will have a, a focus, I'm sure, in the, the content of the SLA and how to, um, despite the CRISP is the one that may uh, co provide custody about uh, if the SLA has or not, um, or, or respects or not the, the results of the or the guidance of the CRIS, it's useful for the community to discuss this and this is uh, considered to be discussed uh, for for the second panel that I mentioned. I'm sure there will be a section there. Okay, excellent. Uh, thank you, Andres, for confirming this. Um, so let's move to 3D, um, so feedback from other communities. So um, there's a couple of uh, updates. Um, first, not exactly the feedback from other communities, but I I do want to uh, to share that uh, there will be a panel on the WISIS forum um, on the 28th of May, um, where they will um, be discussing the INS stewardship transition uh, and how the process went and things like this. And uh, this is organized by the uh, the course community working group on the internet governance uh, within the ICANN community. So it's not. And I can, as a secretariat, but I can community organized group, um, and they would like to invite um, people from the very the three operational communities. So um, not just the I can and the names, but the, the protocol parameters and the numbers community to to share about the process um, in relation to the INS stewardship transition. So um, it would be good if we could have somebody from the Chris team. Um, joining the panel, um, sharing our perspective, if anybody plans to attend the meeting. Uh, I myself won't be there, unfortunately, and um, I just wonder if there's anybody from the Chris team um, planning to be at the WISIS forum. Um, I'm not seeing any hands, and um, so as I raised, um, yeah, thank you. Craig for confirming that you won't be there. Um, and so if I don't hear from anybody by Monday next week, um, I think I'll just um, to say that um, nobody from the Chris team will be at the forum and uh, perhaps um, 
if somebody from RIR staff is attending, then uh, maybe um, he or she can uh, represent the numbers community, as uh, I would expect the RIR staff to be following our process very closely, and they would be familiar with the numbers process, um, um, process as well. Um, so that's on the, the WISIS forum. And, um, and another thing I would like to update is the the me on the panel with the ICANN board. So I gave a, an update on the mailing list, and uh, as I said, there were no further uh, discussions or, or related to um, to the point, the talking points that I shared. But um, I think I, I managed to share what we should have put across. So I shared uh, three major points. One is. Um, making sure that the transparency is uh, essential in the process, not just in terms of developing the proposal and the ICG process, but uh, in preparing the implementation as well. The second point is that um, making sure that the implementation is uh, consistent with the proposal. Um, that is the second point I made. And the third point is um, having a better communication uh, between the operational communities. So the CRISPR team and the numbers community has prepared the SLA, the slides, and things like this. And it uh, would be good to have this shared uh, with wider community outside the numbers. So uh, maybe there's a role that I can, can play in um, disseminating this message. Uh, and the second is that um, maybe it would be good to have a direct communication between the, the leaders of the operational communities, the protocol parameters, and the names, in addition to collaboration with the um, through the ICG. So I think we have already actually partially started this in communicating with the, the names chairs. Um, so I think that those are the points that I, I basically shared. And um, there weren't much discussion uh, which followed um, during this so open um, discussion time with the with the leaders of the operational communities. But I did get an acknowledgement from the chair um, um, of the board, uh, Steve Cocker, that uh, they heard us. And um, uh, the board apparently had further discussions um, among themselves related to this point. Anybody have any questions related to um, the panel with the ICANN board? If not, then um, I'd like to um, highlight one of the points that is, um, has been getting quite a lot of attention, not just within our community, but within the ICANN community as well, uh, on the ability to, to change the IANA function operator. So after the ARI meeting, um, Milton Miller has uh, put, a, put up the blog um, that you're all aware of, and uh, this has caught some attention. Um, within the ICANN community, and um, it was raising some concerns on the ICANN accountability cross community group uh, within the ICANN that this may be a concern from the accountability perspective as well. So, um, so the board, um, the board liaison, uh, Bruce Tonkin, has uh, uh, communicated to the group uh, just this morning that. Uh, the ICANN board confirms that they respect the community process and uh, uh, make sure that uh, the process will be um, will be respecting the bottom up uh, discussions and um, and if there are any concerns related to any of the things that has been proposed in um, relation to ICANN as an organization, then they will be communicating through the public uh, comment process. Um, so that's what the um, board has uh, clarified. And um, so I think this is good news. I, I do note this um, one of the points that is um, being made um, in relation to this is that the board said that it is important to have um, for the community to change the IANA operator as a fallback plan. Um, so that is something that is, um, Andre has highlighted a, a little bit different from the numbers proposal, that we're not really restricting um, just in case of any failure or like um, including the service level, but we have this ability to change the IANA operator. 
um, and not just restricting to those reasons. So I think that's what um, uh, the numbers proposal has, uh, has described. Um, I do have additional uh, comments related to this that, um, uh, as you can see from the question from GAO, and um, I think um, we need to be clear that uh, we, at the same time, we ensure that uh, the stability of the IANA um, numbering services will continue even if we change to the op uh, change the IANA operator. And uh, this is something that uh, we need to be clearly uh, communicating with the um, communities outside the numbers uh, community and including the, um, the U.S. government and giving assurance that uh, uh, we will, it will be in our interest as a numbers community to ensure that in case we change the IN operator in the future, we would certainly want to change in the way that doesn't destabilize the INR functions uh, in terms of the number. So that's just uh, my additional observation. Anybody have any comments um, related to this? Nope, I'm not seeing any hands. So then let's go to um, agenda item four. Um, we confirm the role of the Chris team in community consultation and implementation. So I say, I'll just share the, um, the, uh, the request from the chair of the NROEC, um, Axel Pollock, that they have requested us to to, um, to gather input from the community on the SLA and uh, coordinate and uh, share with the uh, RIR um, the feedback to be reflected on the SLA. Um, so that's the request. And, um, and the reason for that is that um, it, it was explained that this is already in the, in the part of the charter um, for the Chris team which I, I have a slightly different reading of the charter um, on this, but um, in, in general, I mean, its conclusion, I think it does make sense for the Chris team to, to, um, to coordinate the feedback from the community and communicate this to the RIR, because this would make it seem more fair and representing the community as uh, we are the representatives of the, um, the numbers community, we are seeing and you know, observing what was uh, being discussed and uh, what is consistent, not consistent with the, um, the Christian proposal and share with the, the RIRs, rather than RIRs themselves just uh, picking um, what seems to be relevant. Um, so that uh, definitely makes sense. Uh, so I see a comment from Andres. Um, Andres, did you, did you want to? Oh, thank you for quoting. Um, this. The Chris team will integrate the input from each of the five RIR regions and finalize the initial RIR submission to the ICG in response to the RFP. If there are subsequent revisions to be made to the RIR ICG submission, the Chris team will document the need for such changes and produce an update, updated ICG submission after the global number community discussion on the necessary changes. Yeah, this is the part that I, I think uh, we're not uh, proposing any changes. Um, so it's more like implementation. So I don't necessarily agree that this is in line with the charter. But as I said, I'm OK with uh, considering the team to play this role. Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi. Um, well, I tried to make this point last time at our last teleconference. I still um, see a difficulty with the Chris team uh, somehow summarizing or reviewing comments from the community. This role is not entirely clear to me how we're going to perform it. I can understand another role of the Chris team is reviewing the revisions of the SLAs uh, based on community feedback. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm not sure I, I express myself clearly, but uh, the process when uh, the legal teams, the RIRs, incorporate feedback, and then the Chris team can review this to say whether it's consistent with the feedback that we've got from the community and also with the 
principles of the CRISP proposal, I think that makes more logic to me than uh, filtering, summarizing, uh, packaging the comments from the community. I, I'm not sure we, we, we have this. Um, this is within our realm and within our charter. Um, another point with the charter, I think if, if whatever role is going to be assigned to the CRISP team with regards to SLA and review committee, I would really prefer this to be communicated explicitly, not being kind of, oh yeah, this is, this is implied by this uh, item of charter. And I think that can be communicated by, by mailing list and agreed on mailing list. We don't need a, a huge process for that. But I think that's where we get our authority. And if community disagrees with this role or sees this differently, I think we can have a, a problem later, right, where our input is not um, accepted or not taken seriously. So those are two points I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. I especially agree with your, the second point that you made, um, that this has to be communicated clearly and with the community. Uh, this was uh, one of the reasons I wanted to, to raise this on the agenda, and I also felt that this has to be clear, not just to us, but with the community, because I, I expect maybe there's some confusion on what, you know, how this um, feedback will be incorporated and who's taking this role and incorporating this feedback. So I think this process and the role has to be um, communicated very, very clearly to the, uh, to the global list as well. Um, thank you, Andre, for raising this. And yes. As I, as I understand uh, Andre's point, and I have been, I have seen uh, some support um, from other colleagues from this group on his comments. Uh, I wanted to, because I don't want to be uh, in the uncomfortable position of uh, being the, the as I am also attending the NROEC meetings on behalf of my of my organization, but I don't want to, to I, I am a Christian member here and I don't want to be somehow any representative of any uh, other interest uh, or at least the NROEC's interest. So I wanted to, to know if this uh, communication has been done officially for from the NROEC with this content or even if, uh, there is a way where we can clarify the expectations that the NROIC has because um, this has been discussed uh, a lot also. The, the, the Christian role has been discussed a lot uh, on, on the NROIC last week and um, there has been uh, specific points on, on this uh, or, or at least in this uh, issue that we are discussing and uh, I want to, to be clear that this uh, message is uh, uh, the, the awareness of these messages with us, with uh, Christine, because uh, we believe, or the NROIC believe, that at, at the moment that the, the revision on the SLA has been done with the draft that we already provided, but uh, the next steps are, uh, the expectation is that the next, in the next steps that is the community the one, the one that has to, to revise it, and uh, at least, uh, well, again, I don't want to be the one that is uh, facing the crisp with other interests or other positions, so I want to just to uh, understand if uh, that message has been received or how we can maybe we can have a, di a discussion or a call with the NROIC and the crisp team, so where the directors are the ones that uh, may clarify their position and, and may maybe we can also discuss with them uh, different uh, alternatives or views if it is the case. Thank you, Andres. Uh, yes, I think it would be helpful to have more um, uh, communication and clarification with the NROEC on the point that is not clear to us or any suggestions. Um, any part of the suggestions that uh, we, we don't necessarily like uh, agree at this point. So I think this is a helpful suggestion. Thank you, Andres. So let's go to Craig. Thanks, Izumi. Um, I agree with the thrust of the comments made by Andre and Andres. Um, in particular about uh, managing expectations and, and clarity and transparency about the CRISP role. Um, the way I see it, um, CRISP team has a role in making sure that the SLA uh, as drafted is faithful to the principles that set out in the CRISP proposal. And I see that as the, as the main role. Um, there are items 
that the Chris team has left to the RIR lawyers to draft, like jurisdiction and things like that. So I don't believe that you know um, Chris should get involved in in things that um, are not actually. Uh, specifically stated in the proposal, and that should be left to the RIRs to deal with. Um, but secondly, I think you know, in, in this consultation process, um, issues might come up. Um, there might be um, you know requests for changes or whatever um, that may make uh, that that may make requests that are incons inconsistent with the CRIS proposal, for example. Um, and I see the CRIS team have a role in sort of. Taking that discussion and seeing and seeing if um, whether there's some consensus about about making some changes. Um, I can't think of an example, but I merely raised that as the two possible role for the Chris team. Oh, thank you, Pray, for all clarifying this, and um, that oh, that seems to make a lot of sense to me personally, and. Um, so I'd like to see if anybody have any other comments related to um, Craig's uh, um, observation of the role for the Chris team to, to play. So I see a comment from Andre. So it's helpful for the Chris team to review this FLA um, with the eye of the principles and the community feedback and provide advice to the RIRs. Yes, um, yes, I agree. So um, first. The Chris team to see whether this SLA uh, is consistent with um, what we have proposed, the, the principles that we have proposed, and that's one thing. And the second element is that um, um, whether, well, I, I guess this is also joint, like the community feedback during the process um, of developing the proposal to see if this uh, SLA is uh, in line with the, the kind of feedback that we have received from the the community. And uh, yes, notice, Andre, that this is different from summarizing the community comments. Yes, I agree. So I think at least in the last meeting um, we, we had, um, we have said that if this uh, giving feedback, whether um, the SLA text is in line with our proposal or not, it makes sense to be in the um, whether this is um, to be in the role of the first team, but we may receive even like wider comments that is like um, maybe it's something not directly related to the to the proposal, or maybe like a very very detailed part about jurisdiction and things like this. And this is like uh, something that the first team has uh, left uh, to the decision of the RIRs. Maybe this will be um, a little bit too much for the Chris team to to coordinate or summarize and uh, um, and, and share with the RIRs about um, you know this is the the consensus of the community because this is not a, a part of the role that uh, we, we have uh, taken in developing the proposal. Um, so would this be a fair observation of the the feel of the room and um, of the people here, um, the Chris team members who are at the at the call right now. Um, is it me, Craig again? Um, I think we have to be careful that the Chris team works within the charter. So I think to the extent that uh, the community comes up with suggestions that. Um, uh, you know, outside of that, that are contrary to the Chris proposal, or is something that the Chris didn't, well, the Chris team didn't think about, but would have thought about it if um, given the, you know, given an opportunity. Then it makes sense for the Chris team to make a comment, I think. But I, you know, but if it is something, it's very hard to sort of talk in abstract and hypothetically. But I just feel that if it is not something that the Chris team would have covered uh, in the Chris proposal, then there is no point uh, the Chris team sort of intervening and, and, and trying to take a position in relation to those matters. I, I'm, I hope I'm making sense, but I'm not sure if I am. Yes, I understood your point. So even with, so basically we, we comment whether this is consistent with the, um, the Chris team proposal. 
or even if it is not clearly stated whether this is consistent with the spirit of the proposal or the discussions that we had with the community. Is that a fair summary of what you wanted to say? Yeah, I think so. I, I, what, what, I suppose what I'm trying to do, and this is the slight kind of uneasiness that a few of us have um, being on the CRISP team and on the RIR legal team as well, um, because ultimately the, the document that we're signing has a lot of uh, legalese and stuff like that in there. And, and I suppose what I'm trying to say is that um, bluntly that the RIR would want to sort of make sure that the interests are protected in, in sort of the legal issues, um, and but but it, it, but the RIRs are interested to make sure that the principles of the CRISP um, are very well preserved. Mm -hmm. Yes, noted. And I think it, um, on some of the issues, it may be um, hard to. Um, to see from the community's perspective. So where, where do we draw the line? And I mean, um, so who's going to take a role for cer like a certain point and things like that? So maybe as a next step, would be good to have like a, a, a opportunity to have a dialogue with the NROEC. Um, I think there will be um, like a couple of NROEC attending the right meeting next week and um, Maybe we can like uh, organize a call um, um, discussion opportunity with them. Um, I'll be attending right meeting, and I don't know if we can organize a, a teleconference uh, which allows the Chris team members who are not in the right meeting to attend or not. I mean, this is something I have to uh, consult with um, the right NCC staff. But um, maybe if we can organize uh, an opportunity like this, then maybe it will clarify. Our expect like the um, the expectation that NROEC has, and what we think is uh, is uh, is our role, and uh, and if there are any differences in the roles that NROEC is expecting, then who's taking this uh, additional role that um, you know that is not uh, clear um, at this stage. So I think it will be um, worth clarifying this um, and uh, meet up with the um, NROEC next week. Does anybody have any? Just a last point. I think, um, yeah, I think, look, it's it's very hard to sort of predict what's going to come. Perhaps what we do in the, in the meantime is to make sure that the CRISP team is comfortable that the SLA uh, faithfully reproduce the principles in, as currently drafted. Um, and, and that's the first thing I think that the CRISP team would need to do. And whatever comments that come up, I think we can. Uh, decide. I mean, there's ample opportunities for us to meet and discuss this over the next few weeks and a couple of months. So I think there's a, a plenty of opportunity to, to sort of discuss when it comes up, whether it's in or out, I think. Uh, yes. Um, so, um, so you're suggesting that we should first focus on, on Reviewing whether this is um, the the SLA is, is consistent with our proposal, and related to other comments that is received from the community, then there's other opportunities to discuss. Um, I, I just wasn't sure if you agreed with my suggestion to have a meeting with the um, NROEC related to the role of the um, the team um, next week. Oh yes, I have no no issues with having a, having meetings. Um, but I think, you know, from at least from the legal team, and this is me wearing a hat from the RIR legal team, uh, we will be very keen to hear from the CRISP team if anyone thinks that, um, you know, aspects of the SLA um, is not uh, consistent with the CRISP principles. Mm, okay, yeah, totally makes sense. Thank you for clarifying this. So I think um, there are two things that we need to focus first purely from the Christian perspective. So I think um, in the public comment, um, in the call for comment for the SLA, and ROEC has actually clearly said that uh, they are expecting feedback from the Chris team um, on the SLA text whether we think this is consistent with the, the numbers proposal that uh, we have give, um, submitted to the ITG. So this is certainly something that uh, we should uh, work on. 
And in addition, how are we going to to handle the the community feedback that is uh, being on the INA global list? Um, I think this is something that uh, is um, more open for discussion, more discussions with the ROEC. And at this uh, moment, I think our feeling is that um, we can um, give observation whether this uh, certain comment is um, in line with the, the spirit of the, the numbers proposal or not. But um, it would be um, uh, beyond our, um, our acknowledged role to to give a summary on the comments um, that is posted on the INO list, or uh, we take a lead in uh, dis um, coordinating the discussions on the global list on the, um, on the SLA. So I see a comment from uh, Michael that uh, he agrees there will be plenty of opportunity for discussions. Um, as long as we keep in mind the charter of the Chris team and clear direction of our role moving forward. So, um, so what I suggest is that we, we have a call with the NROEC, and then before this, um, I will summarize um, uh, what we acknowledge as the role of the Chris team on um, the SLA, on um, any of the discussions that will take place on the SLA. And I see a comment from Andre that uh, another clear, clear model could be that the, the community, with the community, the Chris team coordinates advice to the RIRs regarding each public version of the SLA and review um, charter. So, um, Andre, please. Thank you, Zumi. Just to clarify what I just written in the chat room, I think if we apply the same model we used when creating or producing the proposal, which we coordinated community input to produce this proposal, CRISP, I think if we apply the same model to produce and advise the document through the areas, advising them on the changes uh, to the SLAs, and we can do this for each revision, that would be more clear to me than, you know, like, uh, I'm not sure we have the authority to say, well, this is a good comment, this is a bad comment, and this is a summary. But to produce an advice and reaching consensus of the community on this advice, that's something that we can probably do. Um, I'm not sure if I fully understood um, the, the difference. So you're not you're saying that uh, we, we can't. It's not within our role to to pick and choose um, the feedback from the community, but to give advice to the RIR um, from what perspective? Then um, can I just uh, Oh, co co coordinate feedback from the community in the way we coordinated feedback from the community on the CRISP, uh, the proposal itself. I think we can produce this document, which would be advised to areas as it goes to SLAs, and say, well, this section needs to be extended, this section needs to have more attention, something like this, which has general consensus from the community. I'm not sure how complex this process would be, but that, that in that in that 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 model, the Chris team, in my opinion, Chris team role is more clear, and is within the same framework as it was when we developed the proposal. Uh, okay, I understand. So rather than like uh, commenting on the comments that we receive, we will um, coordinate with uh, the discussions within the community. Okay, this uh, we think that uh, this part should be this, and uh, what do you think? And then like I hear the feedback, and then um, um, integrate any of the um, discussions that take place, and then we we communicate this uh, to um, to the um, NROC. Okay, understood. Um, thank you, Andre. Mm, yeah, that might be um, something we can consider. Yeah, so it's a little bit to beyond from what we have been uh, discussing earlier. Um, it, it, um, that's that's my observation. So um, I'm conscious of um, time um, and. Um, but this is a very important uh, discussion. So let me see if there is anybody else who would like to comment on this agenda and share your thoughts at this stage. And um, 
And then, um, if not, maybe I will summarize what we agreed on so far and um, hear further feedback within the community, especially related to Andre's point, because this is something that is, um, we haven't clearly acknowledged uh, um, before we put this on the agenda as a part of our role. So I think, um, you know, the, um, the first team members, including those who are not at the call today, uh, should be able to see and give feedback whether they're comfortable with this uh, role. So I will do a summary on this and then hear it, um, uh, request for comments and um, and also try to organize a call with the NRO um, next, next week. Um, and hopefully we can invite the first team members who are not at, uh, in the right meeting, but I'm not sure that also depend, that does depend a little bit on the, on the situation. So uh, does that make sense and uh, agreeable as the next uh, steps? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands, so um, let's uh, move um, on this agenda. So we'll organize a call and then also summarize uh, what we have agreed to for, uh, for the comments online with the existing members about our role. Um, so thanks everyone for your feedback. And um, we are very limited in time for Agenda 5. Um, sorry for keep going over the time. Um, May I suggest that uh, we discuss this for another um, 15 minutes uh, and um, uh, to be at least clear on the next steps. So uh, I'm not seeing any objections related to this. So uh, let me just uh, give a very quick update on the meeting running in the hat with the uh, CWG chairs. Um, so, um, in general, the, when the, the names community developed the proposal, they made sure that it doesn't affect the, the proposal that has already been submitted by the protocol parameters and the numbers. So that was the basic spirit on how they have developed the proposal. And um, the, the names proposal uh, is uh, suggesting to set up um, three new bodies uh, related to the INS stewardship transition. One is the uh, PTI. Um, so this is uh, a separate uh, entity from ICANN, but uh, a group uh, organization uh, of ICANN, where ICANN will uh, will um, delegate the operation of the INF function to PTI. So you can see this as the current INF department within ICANN will form a separate entity. And ICANN will delegate this function to PTI. So that's the basic idea. And um, in ensuring this uh, service level uh, related to the names function, uh, will be maintained, they will set up this um, um, customer service review committee or some, I can't remember the exact name, but uh, uh, the short abbreviation is CSC. So the direct customers of the, the names function will review the service level and then um, um, see if they're comfortable with it. They will also set up a um, customer standard committee, thank you, Andre. That's it. Um, and they will also set up a, a review team uh, composed of um, community representatives within the ICAN forum to, to review the feedback from this uh, CSC customer standing committee as well as other aspects of the, um, the INF function, such as um, whether to conduct the customer service or uh, customer um, um, survey related to this or like uh, consider the frequency of this um, service level review and things like this. So it's more like a consider more matter administrative uh, things related to um, to the INA function. So that's the role of the, um, the review team. So that is the basic framework. 
And um, what we have um, confirmed with the names chairs is that PTI will include all three INA functions. So it's not just on the names, but including the protocols and the numbers. That's our point number one. And we have also confirmed whether this uh, PTI scheme will still allow us to have a separate uh, um, contract SLA with um, uh, with the the INA function operator as we have proposed in the in the numbers proposal and the answer was yes. So we, we can still have a separate con contract focusing just on the numbers. And whether we will have a contract with the ICANN or directly with the PTI, that's um, left up to us, depending on how we would uh, prefer as a legal framework. Um, so that's um, that's one point, and the second is whether we are still able to conduct independent uh, customer um, service level review uh, under the review committee that we're proposing as a numbers committee. Again, the answer was yes. CSC is basically focusing on the numbers, or, or, or sorry, on the names aspect of the, the service level, and the review committee is more like. Um, Mm, as I said, um, more meta things that is not directly relevant to the service level, and um, it doesn't seem to ha um, make decision on the core decisions such as budget of the owner function or the staffing of the owner function. That is not included as within the scope of the review committee. So it's up to us whether we want to join the review committee or not. So if we want to, we can send representatives, and if not, then we don't need to. So that's the basic um, uh, framework. And I see a question from Andre. Why numbers need to be on PTI board? Well, this is um, uh, still a very open question. So um, it was clarified that uh, the purpose of PTI board is not agreed and clear, and also the composition of the PTI board. So it is true that one of the options being discussed is for uh, the representatives from all of the operational communities to, to send representatives um, as the PTI board. But that's just one of the options. So it's not an agreed option, so there could be other options available. Andre. Well, thank you, Izumi. Um, um, what, well, why I ask this question? Because for me, personally, the fundamental question is what kind of model we employ here. And uh, my understanding that in our CRISP proposal, the model that we have chosen, we, meaning the community, have chosen is simple customer-provider relationship, right? And the instrument we achieve uh, uh, you know, up to level performance of the function is by the SLAs, by the contract. And following this model, I, I just see no reason uh, having someone on the board which is seen as sort of partly as an instrument of achieving objectives of, of IANA customers, right? I can agree with kind of we need a liaison relationship because, um, yeah, it's, it's IANA is still running the operator, running three functions, but I'm afraid just Having someone on the board, especially with not very clear um, charter, uh, might mud slightly uh, the model we have chosen, which is elegant and clear. Yes, I agree with the observation, Andre. And this was something that um, the names chair has explicitly asked us to provide feedback on this, and it would help them in considering um, the future steps of the PTI board. Um, how the numbers community view this. So if we feel that um, um, we, we don't need to be represented in the PTI board and assuming the role of the PTI board will be, you know, uh, within this, um, I don't know, um, will be this, this and that, then I think this is something that we should uh, give clear guidance to the, um, to the CWG stewardship um, and what we want. Or for them to consider um, about the PTI board.
So, um, and there are, um, so first of all, um, do, does anybody else have any questions uh, related to what I've shared? Uh, Michael is saying, Andreas makes a good point because we, we contract with the operator um, and composition of the board theoretically shouldn't matter so, so long as we have appropriate termination provisions and on contract protection, particularly if PTI board does PTI does not perform functions appro appropriately. Exactly. Yes, we we don't really care about like uh, additional elements as as long as um, the PTI performs the the, the functions um, in accordance to our service level expectations. And uh, in case they don't meet it, uh, we, we do have the ability to terminate the agreement. So I think uh, people are in agreement with um, with Andre, and so. Um, maybe this is something that uh, one of the things that we should communicate uh, clearly to um, to the names um, community when we give the feedback uh, as a Christine uh, on the proposal. And as you know, the the deadline for the public comment is on the 20th of May, and um, Nurani and I will have another meeting with the um, the. Um, the names chairs on the 13th of uh, May, uh, giving the feedback at the numbers community related to this. Um, and I think there are a couple of other points that um, Alisa has uh, listed, uh, not just uh, in addition to the PTI board, but um, uh, whether we are we agree with the PTI of covering all three functions, or do we just want certain elements um, to be transferred to PTI and um, and whether we we think it makes more sense for us to have a contract with the ICANN or we would want to have a contract with the PT or PTR directly and things like this. And so um I think Michael and John um um have kindly volunteered to work on analysis on the names proposal from the numbers perspective. And um, I'm just wondering if there's some, so what, what's the current status of uh, work um, on analysis? Would uh, Michael be able to share? Yes, hi, Zumi. Thank you. Um, John uh, and I actually had met uh, last week, and we were uh, we went over the two proposals, you know, trying to do a comparison. And actually, he and I are, are working on doing a write-up that we're going to share with the uh, the Chris team on this, so hopefully uh, we'll be getting that to you guys shortly, and hope and maybe that'll be a good um, good kind of comparison and assist the team in looking at this. Excellent, um, very nice to hear this. So um, it would be nice if we can share something um, a little bit concrete before Nurani and I meet with the names chairs and. Um, so that will be on the 13th of May. Do you think it's likely to be ready before this, or do you think that you, you might need more time? If you need more time, maybe um, we can think of um, what we can share at that stage, even though it might not be a concrete um, analysis. Um, I actually think we should be perfectly fine with having something before the 13th, hopefully much, um, much earlier than that, so you'll have some uh, preparation before your meeting with the chairs. Excellent. So thank you very much. And I assume that uh, this also covers the points that uh, Alisa has uh, raised on the on the IMO Global Group. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. So thank you very much. So thank you again to Michael, you and uh, John for working with us. We very much appreciate this. And I see a comment from Andrea on the chat that uh, unfrequent coordination may be achieved by um, liaison relationships. Yes, exactly. Um, I think this was something that was raised at the um, our meeting with the CWG uh, chairs, whether we might want to consider coordination, especially on the on the review committee and the on their uh, CSC, uh, what, and uh, coordinate on, on and any reviews that we do on the INA, uh, respectively, respectively on the names and the numbers. So this may be something that. Um, we might want to consider as well. Okay, great. So I think we're covered on fine. And um, unless anybody else have any comments or questions related to this. Okay, 
Okay, I think we're good. So uh, let's confirm the date of the next meeting. So on her man, would you help me double check when is the suggested date of the next uh, meeting? Checking, checking that, please give me a second. That would be the 27th of May. Okay, so that's going to be in uh, three weeks' time. Yeah, okay, 27th of May. And um, so it would be great um, if you could send out the, the announcement for the next meeting uh, on the Christine list. And well, actually, I think it's sufficient to send this out to the global IANA list. Uh, so Andre is confirming uh, whether that's a Wednesday. Well, I don't know from the top of my head, but uh, perhaps um, yeah, confirm the data on email first, and then um, once this is confirmed, we can send this out to the global list. So. I think um, we've covered um, all the agenda topics uh, for the call. Uh, so to reconfirm, the follow-up item that uh, is uh, very important is um, confirm on the Christine role on um, how we, we're going to do on consultation on implementation. So I will summarize this and then also organize a call with the NROEC and then also uh, on agenda five the, um, to give feedback on the names proposal. Uh, Michael and John will share the analysis um, on the, with the Chris team before um, meeting, before Murani and I meet with the names chairs on the 13th. I think that's the core point of what we agreed at the call today. It's a Wednesday. Thank you for confirming. The next uh, Chris team call will be on Wednesday. So thank you very much all for your time and um, well, we'll keep in touch online. So thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.